Hi, my name is Wouter Emery and I'm the founder of Airshaper. In this interview, we had the honor to talk to Henrik Fisker. Not only is he a legendary car designer, he designed cars like the BMW Z8, the Aston Martin DB9 and so on. He's also been active in the electric vehicle industry for almost two decades with his brand Fisker. And in this interview, he explains what they mean with the world's most sustainable electric vehicle. Enjoy the interview. Hey Henrik, good morning. Nice to see you. Thanks for taking the time for this interview. Good morning or good afternoon over there in uh, Holland. Uh, yes, yes. And it is Belgium. It's evening already, uh, but have it uh, free of the time for you. <laughs> um, I've been seeing your work, and many people have, uh, in the past and, and in the present. You did the BMW Z8, the Aston Martin DB9, and then you uh, founded Fisker uh, to work on your own cars, your own designs. You have a lot of stamina uh, in the business. How has it been, this trajectory? You know, I think, first of all, you have to do something you love, right? And I love what I do, and I would probably do, an, do it even if I wouldn't get, get paid for it. I uh, probably shouldn't say that, but yeah. that's, that's the truth. I just love to do it. So if I, were, if, if I had to do another job, I would probably sit and sketch cars in my spare time. Yeah. Um, so, you know, I love what I do, and uh, I kind of feel like this is my, uh, uh, you know, calling if you want <laughs> to, yeah. to design cars and create cars and build cars. And I think what really has inspired me um, in, in the, the sort of last probably 10 years is really people who have um, spent such a huge amount of time out of their personal time or, or business time to help create a better environment, help to improve our, our environment. And I felt, what can I do? You know, yeah. and yes, I can go and help, you know, clean up the beach and stuff, but what can I do on a, on a bigger level? And that's really why I decided to go into trying to create sustainable vehicles that are still beautiful, little, still desirable, still something people turn around and look at and yeah. go, wow. Uh, yeah. So we will see that eventually we are going to be able to create and manufacture electric vehicle in a very, very sustainable way. This is not something that's going to happen overnight. You know, this is an industry that, that, that is like an oil tanker. It takes probably at least seven to 10 years to make a dramatic turn in the car industry. And part of the reason is that the lifetime of a new automotive platform with all the development, all the crash testing, all the investment is about seven years. Yeah. So you can't just after two years scrap and say, let's do something new because then it doesn't make financial sense. So, I think that over the next seven years is when we are going to see these dramatic changes, but it's not going to be the end of it. We're going to need longer to ultimately manufacture, you know, truly sustainable cars where we can say we, we really now are to the point where we have hit the goal, so to speak. But I, I also don't think we can just sit around and wait and just sort of say, hey, because we don't have perfect sustainable cars, let's just go back and buy an old diesel car. I think that's wrong. I think we got to get started. We got to get the ball rolling, and that's what we're trying to do at Fiskering. Yeah. Okay. And and part of improving um, the efficiency or range is aerodynamics, uh, which which is our passion, obviously, and yours as well. What special tricks did you apply to the latest car to make sure it could go those extra miles by tuning the aerodynamics? So I think that, first of all, uh, one of the advantages of an electric car, of course, is you already have a flat floor. Yeah. Uh, so that's one advantage. The other um, things we did particular, and this, this vehicle has a lot to do with the roof shape uh, yeah. to make sure you're doing that correctly. And then it's really a lot around uh, the, the lower front end, the lower rear end, how the, the wind kind of leaves the body, so to speak, without creating yeah. too much turbulence. So those are things that I've kind of learned throughout my design career, that there's a lot of these, uh, you know, elements that you kind of know what you have to do. But I also want to have to say honestly that, you know, my goal one, not just to design the most aerodynamic car, because if you do that, it, it ends up looking a lot like a lot of the other very aerodynamic yeah. cars, which ultimately is a little bit more of a hatchback style, uh, you know, teardrop shape uh, that we have seen so many times. So the range argument is really only happening right now because we still feel there's a long way between charging stations and we're not sure if we get there, if we can you know, have time to actually wait to fill up the car with electricity. 
But I think what's going to happen, in my view, is over sort of the next three or four years, we will see a dramatic increase in the charging infrastructure, uh, both in, in US, Europe, and even China. We are going to be able to much easier ac assess how long do you really need to stay at a charging station. And in the future, I believe we don't necessarily have to wait there for hours. And once people get used to all that, I think the total range in a vehicle becomes irrelevant. You need the benefits of scale in this industry. Does that mean that Fisker is also looking at rolling out a massive number of cars straight away with, with huge plans and expansions and so on? Or is there an option to do it differently? If all the electric car manufacturers, or let's say there's many normal car manufacturers that make electric cars, but imagine that all electric cars today were using the same battery cell. Or imagine all electric cars today were using the same maybe set of modular electric motors, you would already have scale. Yeah. But of course they don't. So I think the only way to get scale is you got to partner up and create some sort of consortium. And that's what we are working on. And that's how we get our price down. So that was it for this interview with Henrik Fisker on the most sustainable electric vehicle on the planet. I hope you liked it. If you did, please drop a comment below to start an interesting discussion. Thanks a lot for watching. See you soon. Bye bye.